from personal experience that getting started with writing your personal statements is one of the most difficult things you'll have to do throughout your whole application process. So I'm going to ramble at you for about 10 minutes and hopefully you can get out some advice from this. How's it going? I'm making this video because I've been getting a lot of comments from you guys asking me to, you know, read through your personal statements and, um, you know, make videos about this. And I guess I'll just address that right at the beginning before I start. Guys, I would love to help you out with your personal statements, but honestly, I don't have the time to sit and read everybody's and make comments and send back. Like, I've already received quite a few. Um, and it's not fair for me to look at some people's and not look at others so the best thing I can help you out with is this video but I'm trying to make the advice as broad as possible just so it can help everybody out alright are you ready for some mediocre to slightly higher than average advice cool let's get started so let's get the basics out of the way first if you are applying to universities within the UK as part of the UCAS program you have to write something called a personal statement which is around I think 4,000 characters long in this statement you generally tend to talk about yourself why you want to study this course and what qualities and experiences you have that makes you a suitable candidate a personal statement should be there to get across who you are so you know be yourself be unique. I know I sound like some sort of like cliche mum. I'm sorry. <laughs> but the last thing you want is to try and like come across this person who you're not. You know, especially if you have interviews and all that kind of stuff. You don't want to get caught out is what I'm saying. All right. That put aside, I've got my laptop here with a couple of notes on that. So let's get into it. Number one, and I think this is a really big advice, and that is to start strong. What I mean by starting strong is opening up with a sentence that is very direct and directly shows your interest and why you want to do what you want to do. And the reason why I say this is because so many students, and myself included, have a tendency to want to make things very flowery. So starting off with something like, I have always had a passion for ecosystems and diversity. And I mean, okay, fine, you might have enjoyed biology, but have you always, have you really been that passionate about ecosystems and diversity? And I mean, hey, if you are, that's fantastic. But for the most part, it seems as though you're trying to make it a bit too flowery, if you know what I mean. So what I would recommend, and this is my opinion, is that for a strong start, you might go with something along the lines of, and I've got it on my laptop here, something along the lines of, from simple microorganisms to entire sophisticated ecosystems, I am very much fascinated in biology and the diversity of the living world. So not only does that tell the reader that you want to study biology, but it also tells them a little bit more of the kind of aspects that you're interested in. And again, in my personal opinion, it sounds a little bit better than I have always wanted to do biology because I have always been interested in it. And just another final tip for the beginning, you don't need to try and make it sound too eloquent and too over the top. Just try and be as direct as possible. I want to study this because I'm really fascinated by this. Pretty standard, should work for most courses. And I've written down one more example here so I'll read that out to you as well. Instead of starting with I am really passionate about psychology, you could say something like our thoughts, actions and behaviours are governed by the brain's ability to process information. And I am fascinated by how disruption in these processes can result in a variety of mental illnesses. And I'm using that example because that's pretty much a rewording of what I wrote for my um, postgraduate, except instead of psychology, I wanted to do cancer research. Number two, state why you are interested. So after starting strong and showing your interest in a particular area, the next step is to try and demonstrate why you're interested. I think this is the best part for you to demonstrate your interest by sharing a personal story, if you have one. So just to use an example that I've got in my notes, if you're applying for psychology, you could say something like, my interest in mental illness developed after a family member was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and this made me eager to want to learn more about how disorders develop and how they can be treated. If you do have a personal experience, that's fantastic, but if you don't, try not to find like the tiniest thing and hold on to it because people who read this can really see through it. So what I mean is, don't write something like, oh I once had a panic attack on a crowded train and now I want to do psychology. I think if it is a situation where you don't have a personal story, really think and try and put into words why exactly you want to do what you want to do. 
So the example I've got written here is, for example, for biology, you could say my passion for science and immense curiosity about the natural world are two of the reasons to study biology. And as long as you say why you want to study something and you say it in the most genuine way you can, you shouldn't worry. Sorry guys, I just had to go replace the battery. So if the shot looks a bit different, that's why. So number three, and this is a good one, it's demonstrate your desire to learn. So this brings me on to this point, which I think is very important. And that is, instead of trying to impress the admissions tutors by everything you know and everything you've done, try to put more of an emphasis on wanting to learn new things and wanting to gain new experiences. And the reason why I say this is sometimes if you come across almost too confident in your um, personal statement, someone might read this and go, well, well, this person clearly seems to be an expert. Why do they want to come and study here? So for example, instead of saying by doing a little biology, I now understand the structure of a cell and how it functions, you can say something like, by studying A-level biology, I have gained an understanding of cellular structures and functions, and I would like to expand on this knowledge by studying this course at this university. That genuinely tends to come across a lot more humble and a lot more genuine. And as I said, it really puts forward the fact that you're really keen and really eager to learn more. Number four is use your experiences to demonstrate your skills. So. Up to this point, you've set the scene, you have discussed what course you want to study, you have discussed why, and now it's a point of trying to sell yourself and put your point across as to why you are a suitable candidate to be on this course. I think that the best way to tackle this section is to use your experience to demonstrate your skills as opposed to just listing the skills you have. So, I mean, it's a lot more convincing for you to say that um, I develop team working skills by playing in team sport rather than you just saying I am a team player because in a way you don't really have any evidence to back that up. And I think when it comes to writing personal statements, it's always good to put given as much evidence so they can get as much of a rounder picture of you as possible. So just the things that I've got written on my notes that I see quite commonly is people saying, I am committed, I am committed, I am organized, I am hardworking, I am a people person. All of these skills are amazing and I have no doubt that you guys absolutely do have them, but they need to be backed up. So again, an example in my opinion that I think is quite effective is saying, I understand that commitment and timekeeping skills are very important in this course and I have developed these skills through doing X, Y and Z activity. And the other good thing about saying that is that it shows that you understand that the course requires somebody to be hardworking or organised or good at timekeeping or good at doing a lot of work. Alright, number five, do your research and show it. Now this is a really good place to talk about work experience or shadowing experience or any kind of experience, work experience that you've had. But do bear in mind that these should be relevant. So if you are applying for maths, there's no point talking about I don't know, having like a week of work experience in a care home. You can still mention that, but that might have to be a little bit further down. So using my own personal statement as an example, I remember uh, when I was applying for biomedical sciences, I talked about how I went to visit some pathology labs and got to learn more about how they process blood and how they try and diagnose disease, things like that. Basically, the whole point of this section is to be able to demonstrate that you have an idea of what um, somebody who studies this course is like and what skills and attributes they have. So again, using my own example, because I did biomedical sciences, for me to go into a hospital and see other biomedical scientists, I can see about, oh, well, these people clearly need to be analytical, they need to be this, they need to be that, and I can write, um, I have an understanding of these qualities that this role requires. I know this is a bit arbitrary and it doesn't always apply to all courses, but if it does apply to yours, then do try and alter your personal statement to suit that. Number six is talk about hobbies and transferable skills. See, this is a section where I feel like some students neglect because they're like, oh, well, we've got lots of work experience and we've got lots of, you know, academic experience. We won't talk a lot about this. But honestly, it really does make a difference for you to have all of these extracurricular stuff because again, it makes you a more well-rounded person. And at the end of the day, you're going to university to learn, but what they want 
are people who have the capacity to learn and experience and do lots of different things. You don't already have to be an expert to go and study the course. Okay, I'm rambling, but you get what I mean. Having said that, I think it is still good to try and um, relate your hobbies and transferable skills to the course if you can. And the reason why this is important is because you do have a word limit. So if you are applying to biology and you like to do cooking in your spare time, unless you can find the way to, I don't know, like relate cooking and biology together, I would say maybe not include that. On the other hand, you could talk about things like um, playing a sport and maybe having first aid training or for example tutoring and t teaching younger children science lessons or I guess if you're going to talk about something completely irrelevant so for example I do art in my spare time and in my personal statement I wrote that it's something that helps me relax because then again that shows that when the pressure of university gets too much it shows that you do have you know other hobbies and other things that you can go to you to you know help you get through Last but not least, number seven is end with your future goals. I would say that a good ending is just as important as a good beginning. And personally, I think it's a really good way to talk a little bit about, you know, your goals, your ambitions, what do you strive for? And if you can, maybe add a little bit at the end about how doing this course will help you, you know, get one step closer to that. For example, if you want to go and study nutrition, you can say that you're very passionate about public health and that you want to expand your knowledge so that you can contribute towards um, the problem of obesity or something along those lines. If you don't know what your future goals are, and that's absolutely fine by the way, I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do and I'm 23. So don't worry if you don't already have like a specific career in mind. If that is you, you could simply finish by saying I very much look forward to all of the experiences that university has to offer. Or you could say something like I'm very much looking forward to enhancing my academic but also whatever other skills. And to wrap this whole video up in like a nice little bow for you, I'll finish off by saying, honestly, be genuine. And that's my lovelies, is my take on writing a successful personal statement. I really, really hope that this video helped you out, guys, and I would recommend uh, watching a couple of these videos. I have a few more on my channel, but also check out other channels just to get as much information as you can before you start writing yours. I know how daunting it is, but you will be fine. I honestly wish you all the best of luck and out of curiosity, let me know down below if you're applying for university this year and what course you're doing. Genuinely very curious. Anyway, as I said, best of luck and until next time guys, take care and I'll see you later. Mwah.